My first guest is an Emmy-winning actor, writer, and producer. He co-wrote and performs the new audio series called The History of Sketch Comedy, which is available today exclusively on Audible. Here is Keegan-Michael Key! <laughs> Jimmy Fallon! If there was an audience here, they'd be going bonkers for you. Uh, buddy, it's so great to see you. Thank you for being here. You too, my friend. Last time you were on our show, you did, we did a thing called Wheel of Musical Impressions. And you yes. crushed it. Uh, and it went viral. Thank you for doing that bit with us. Uh, I knew you could do some impressions, but I don't think anyone knew that you could sing like that. It was unbelievable. Yeah, it was, that was so much fun that I got, that I had the, that we had the opportunity to do that together. I just, cause I really, I, I love to sing. And a lot of folks don't know that about me, let alone that I could sing in a style or styles as it were. It was but that Bob was, Marley. Uh, we did Michael Stipe. Uh, you did Sinatra. Yeah. Sinatra, baby. Yeah, I mean, that was, oh my God, it was so much fun. Do you do any other musical impressions that we didn't touch on? I can do impressions of certain musicians. So um, um, I can do an impression of Snoop. Well, you know what I can do? I can impersonate Eddie Vedder. I think Eddie Vedder's always good. Because it's like, Jimmy, I'm doing on the show, on the fed on, on the concrete. You know, <laughs> I'm sorry, hell. I don't, I don't know any words. No. Any Pearl Jam songs. Yeah. I just know it's some old shit on the pound, knocking it down, one of the days on a bundle, one of the funnel in her hair. And you can't open your eyes. And you have to keep your eyes. Yeah, you got to keep your eyes and get into it. The only other thing else that I do is, is I can do Snoop Dogg, not rapping per se, but I was in, um, uh, I was in Pitch Perfect 2, and he was in it, and he and I were in a scene together. I was in playing a music producer. And remember, he came on set, and everybody was like really giddy. And he walked past me, and as he's walking past me, he just looks, he looks at me because he, he knows that I used to impersonate him on Mad TV. So he walked past me, and he went, You a bad, bad boy. <laughs> yes! I love that he said that. You're, you're a bad, bad boy. Oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah, that was it. Uh, how, do you, uh, you, how do you do impressions? Like, how do you figure out how to do them? To, to, frankly, the way I get into them is often by, uh, the way I started was by listening to other people do impressions. In fact, l you, listening to you and Jordan and a really amazing impressionist named Frank Caliendo, who was on Mad TV with oh, me. Oh, he's fantastic. Well, you know, Amazing, right? He's and so for us, what was always interesting was it, it's, it's when somebody else found the hook, then I could jump into the hook. So like with, think about Rich Little. When Rich Little used to do President Reagan, yeah. anybody can kind of do like that husky voice. But what it was was that word, well, well. It, and it and then it went, oh, that's right. The president does well. say well. It's like, well, well, as a nation, we're going to. Yeah, and, and so that was, <laughs> remember that? And so wow. I always used to go, that's how I would get into it, is by going, what's the little hook that you have to find? I know you have a uh, President Obama impression, and you, you had the chance to, to meet him a few times. Have you ever done your Obama in front of Obama? Uh, I've, uh, I've done it. I've done it for him. And uh, a couple times. So, you know, <laughs> and he, it's, well, he, last year, I got to do it for him, like explicitly almost for him. I was telling him a story about impersonating him. I was telling him a story about the fact that I was impersonating him to Ethel Kennedy, to Robert F. Kennedy's uh, wife. And uh, her kids put me up to it. And then I got to relay that story to him and tell him that I was, that I was doing this impersonation. And he was giggling and laughing at the story. And then at the end, at the end, Jimmy, he goes, he goes uh, you know, um, my register's a little bit lower than what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, duly noted, sir. Thank you. I, thank you, sir. Appreciate that. I think I tried to do an impression in front of him, and he was like, is, is that supposed to be me? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I, uh, I'll, I'll be over here. Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, yeah. What am I going to do? Yeah. But, see, then, but how do you do it? How do you hook in to impressions? I, I just start doing people. Like, I, I had this thing when I was a kid, I think. Like, I would watch Rocky, and at the end of Rocky, I thought that I, I was Rocky. So I, I ah, had, so I started acting like him and talking like him and, you know, hey, hey Mickey, you know, you know, whatever. And I, I remember, like, like, before I watched Seinfeld, by the end of the episode, I was talking. Everything was like that. I was doing that. I was <laughs> trying to be him and do it. Like, it's just, it, you're so good at it. I mean, I've, all, I've always enjoyed your Dave Matthews and your Robin Williams. Those are two that have always, like, blown me out of the water. I just, I'm just like, how is he, where did he find that? Rhythm, it's just so good. This is so exciting. 
Uh, the history of sketch comedy. Uh, how did this whole thing come about? So, so basically, uh, L, you know my wife, L, you know, of course, Elle very I love well. Elle. Uh, yeah, my wife, L, and I, we we have always shared this love of comedy. And during quarantine, she suggested that we put our combined knowledge together and then try to create, you know, something for everyone. And this is this is what we came up with. It happens that you know it just it's what happens when you live with a DGA director and a, a PGA producer <laughs> and a brilliant writer. So yeah. that I just had the opportunity. She was like, she did it all. She was just like, hey, what, you know more about sketch comedy than anybody I know. Let's smack our knowledge together and do this thing. And I was like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. And then she um, she kind of created this format and started. We started doing started doing all the research and then we pitched it to Audible. And, and it was amazing because the way she pitched it, she was like, what about this, guys? She, she was like, she was like, if Keegan-Michael Key was a guest lecturer at NYU and was going to give a 10 part class on the history of sketch comedy, I think that would be very popular. I think he would get a lot of apples at the end of class. And then they bought it. And then they pitch. bought it. That's that was good, her pitch. That was her pitch. It's a good and, pitch. Uh, and, and then she was. And then, so we started doing it and we're doing the research, which, of course, was a blast for me. I love getting it. I'm a nerd about this kind of stuff. Yeah. And she goes. And uh, I said, you know, it's fun because we'll be able to get the clips and do this and that and the other thing. And I'll go, oh, no, 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 there's no clips. You're, you're, you're going to be performing all the characters and you're going to be doing all the sketches. And yeah. I was like, I'm, so, I'm sorry, we're going to be doing what now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing all the what to the hoo-hoos? <laughs> <laughs> wow. And, but, but that is what we did. That, so so I do all up. the Foley, <laughs> all the sound effects, all the characters. I'll do two-person scenes, three-person scenes. I'll play all three people in the scene. And then... In, in in the middle of it, I'll like analyze it. So sometimes there'll be like a sketch, like there'll be a guy saying, you know, from the Marx Brothers. There'll be somebody saying, you know, we have to um, we have to stop war because it's prohibitive prohibitive uh, for our taxes. And then Chico Marx will be like, uh, hey, I got an uncle who lives in taxes. No, <laughs> not taxes. Dollar money dollars. <laughs> and that's where he lives. Dollars taxes. <laughs> you know. Dude, there's some Marx Brothers bits that I honestly I have to just I have to just pause it or turn it off because I'm laughing. It's too funny. There's levels of funny. Jimmy, it's crazy. We start at like the beginning. I mean, the, I think some people might go, "Oh, he's going to do a history of the last 30 years." It's he's going to you know maybe he's going to start with SNL. But I start with the ancient Sumerians from the 19th century BC <laughs> and work all the way up to today. So that's wild. But I mean, there's like yeah. you, uh, you go, yeah. I mean. Uh, I, you do touch on SNL. Are there any sketches now that it's done that you uh, you go, ah, we should have talked about that? Or are there any performers? Let's not even say performers. Any performer that you might have? <laughs> <laughs> no. Jimmy, no, there is no performer that I forgot because you're in it. You're in the Audible series. Where? Jimmy, I, we can't win a Pasaki with you and me and Justin Timberlake. That's right. And Billy but... Crystal. Oh, that's with right. You. You are right. in it. I talk about you. And there's a whole that's, section about variety entertainment and talk shows. You're in it. That's why everyone, get out there right now. Go to Audible. Download the history of sketch comedy. Keegan-Michael Key, you are the best, buddy. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Jimmy. Good to see you. Good to see Jimmy you, Jimmy Fallon is in this series. <laughs> we'll be right Listen. back. On and on and on. Uh, I said. And it's on.